So this webinar is gonna take you through a little bit of information about the Spicewood Springs Road um, project that was funded by the 2016 Mo Mobility Bond. We'll jump right in. This is the same information that was presented at a public meeting held in District 10 on September 26th. The purpose of that meeting and the purpose of this webinar and the public outreach we're doing right now is to educate the community about the project timeline, scope, and process, answer community questions about the project, and allow the community to provide comments about existing condi conditions and observations. Below you can see the agenda from the public meeting and we'll just skip right over that for this purpose. So this project is part of the 2016 mobility bond. That was a bond that included $720 million for transportation and mobility improvement citywide. There were three buckets funded through this bond program. The regional mobility program was $101 million. The corridor mobility program was $482 million. The local mobility program was $137 million and that went to fund things such as sidewalks, safe routes to school, urban trails, you can see the list there. The Spicewood Springs Road project is part of the regional mobility program. That included um, corridors that we consider regional in nature because they're serving more than just one neighborhood. They're connecting multiple places or multiple communities. That's things like the Loop 360 corridor intersections, Anderson Mill Road, RM620 at 2222, and Palmer Lane, Old Bee Caves Road, and of course, Spicewood Springs Road. I know you all are interested in the Loop 360 corridor intersection improvements, and we'll get to that later in the presentation. So a little bit more about this project. Our goal is to work with the community to balance needs, priorities, and constraints to develop a constructible project that enhances safety and mobility and fits within the budget. We wanna work side by side with you to better understand what we already know about the road, what you all observe on a daily basis, and how we can make a project that helps you all move through this area. Our project limits are Spicewood Springs Road from Loop 360 to 0.2 miles west of Mesa Drive. We're really looking at the section of road that it goes down from two lanes in each direction with a median to one lane in each direction with no median and no center turn lanes. We have $17 million from the 2016 mobility bond for preliminary engineering design right-of-way acquisition if needed, utility relocation if needed, and of course construction. The types of improvements that we're looking at um, include things like uh, two lanes in each direction with a turn lane and a center median or some combination of both, sidewalks and bike facilities, and then curbs and drainage. And our, our goal is to generally match the intersection of Spicewood Springs Road at Mesa Drive, where it's two lanes in each direction. However, this is all preliminary and we need to work with the community and go through our process to identify what is going to be the best option for this road. So nothing is set, as, set in stone and that is why we were in this, are in this process. We could determine that maybe one lane in each direction is best with a center turn lane. We could say two lanes in each direction with no center turn lane. We could um, work with the community and say, maybe sidewalks are only needed on one side. All of those things are up in the air. Our anticipated timeline is as follows. Right now we are in preliminary engineering. We anticipate that that will last until about mid 2018. That's what we're in right now. That's what doing a lot of data collection. That's working with the community to identify what the issues are um, and working on some preliminary designs that gets us to about 3% design. After preliminary engineering, we would move into design and right-of-way acquisition if needed through 2019, and then utility relocation if needed and construction starting in late 2019 at the earliest. And as you can see, timelines are really contingent on the improvements identified in preliminary engineering. So if we identify a project that's fairly simple, maybe keeping the road mostly the same with some small features added, that could accelerate our timeline. If we identify a major project that's adding lanes in both direction and has a bunch of utility relocation or right-of-way acquisition, then that could extend the timeline. So a lot is contingent upon what we identify with the community in preliminary engineering. 
As far as community engagement goes, we're out in the community right now. That's what our public meeting was, was about, um, engaging with people and identifying what the existing conditions are. We will come back to the community at the end of preliminary engineering when we have draft recommendations in the spring of 2018. We will then come back to the community again once we have final design and a construction plan. And then staff, of course, will stay in communication during construction about timelines and mitigation, um, such as access and noise, the kind of normal things that happen during construction. We wanna make sure that we're addressing those with you as we progress through this project. Our project team is as follows. The transportation department is the sponsor department. Public Works is responsible for project delivery. And our team is comprised of several people who are experts and um, professionals who've been doing this for a long time. We have Paul Terranova, he's the regional mobility program lead. He's overseeing the entire regional bucket from the 2016 mobility bond. We have Janae Landry, she is our pro project manager. We have Jennifer Massey-Gore. She is a supervisor in our engineering services division in Public Works, which is responsible for um, doing the design and preliminary engineering for this project. We have Dipti Boker Desai. Um, she's the area engineer responsible for districts four, six, seven, and 10, 10 being where this project is located. We have Cheyenne Krause. Um, I'm the communications and engagement um, representative working on this project, and Emily Tuttle is my, um, my support person for community communications and engagement as well. Both of us um, have our emails on, on the website, and you're welcome to contact us at any point during this process for any questions. And then, of course, we have internal engineering design and planning teams and consultants who are supporting us doing things like data collection and that kind of thing. Here's a little bit about what we know for the road. We're working with some major constraints. We have an, an environmentally sensitive area with Bull Creek Road to the west of the, of the segment. We have missing sidewalks, missing drainage. We have a very steep slope. We have missing turn lanes. We have a con generally constrained right of way and we have utilities in the right of way. As you can see in this picture that's included in the slide, we have um, fire hydrants that are sitting very close to the road as well as telephone poles and overhead wires that are, again, very close to the road on the other side there. We also are working to make sure that we have the most updated information about traffic volumes. So our consultant is working to collect eastbound and westbound counts on Spicewood Springs Road. We're also doing counts at all of the driveways along the segment that we're looking at so that we can see where people are turning in and turning out. And then turning movement counts at the intersections. Um, the slide doesn't talk about it, but of course we are being mindful that there are developments planned in this area, and we are going to take those into account when we're talking about what impacts this project could have on traffic or how those projects could impact traffic on the road. We also know that there are a few crashes on this road. Um, they're not very high, but of course something we would like to lower. You can see these are broken down by year and by intersection. The first little cluster is Loop 360 at Spicewood Springs. The next one is generally Spicewood Springs with no intersection. And then the last one is the intersection of Adirondack Trail. With this project, we also have significant coordination opportunities that are going to play a role in what we design as a project. First, of course, we have the Loop 360 project. This is a Texas Department of Transportation project. They're managing the Loop 360 study and implementation of improvements. The 2016 bond, as you saw earlier, provided $46 million to fund four intersection improvements, including Spicewood Springs Road slash Bluff, Bluffstone Drive. We have already executed an advanced funding agreement with TxDOT, but environmental studies are still needed. So TxDOT anticipates initiating study for Westlake Drive in early fiscal year 18. That'll be the first of the four that are funded by the bond out of the gate. The timeline is contingent on TxDOT and what they find in the environmental process, but we anticipate generally that the first one could go to bid construction in fiscal year 2022. 
We also have the Old Spicewood Springs Road low water crossing. The City of Austin Watershed Protection Department is already conducting a feasibility study for that low water crossing and potential improvements. They don't have an idea of what they're looking for or looking to do at this time, but we wanna stay in close coordination because of course we know that what decisions are made about Spicewood Springs Road, the old low water crossing, impact the intersection of Loop 360 at Bluffstone Drive slash Spicewood Springs Road. So we wanna keep in, informed with them. We've already had meetings with them and we're um, staying coordinated right now. We also are going to coordinate with existing plans and documents. We have the sidewalk master plan, the bicycle master plan. We have a draft Austin street design guide. We have complete streets policies. We have lots of other things that are supposed to guide our decision making. And so we will coordinate with those to make sure that we're making the best recommendations we can in accordance with city policy. So wrapping up with some next steps, just a reminder, we're in preliminary engineering right now. We have our next touch point with you and the community in mid 2018, and then we'll proceed forward with a timeline based on what we identify in preliminary engineering. You may participate online through October 31st. You can watch, of course, this webinar as many times as you'd like, um, share it with your friends and neighbors, or view a PDF of these slides online. We will also complete data collection in the next few weeks. You may see people out on the road in orange vests counting numbers with clipboards. Um, that's part of this data collection. And then recommendations will be presented to the community in spring 2018. You may connect with us um, through various methods. We have, of course, a website, austintexas.gov forward slash Spicewood Springs RD. We're on Twitter at Austin Mobility. We're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash ATX Transportation. My email, cheyenne.crowsey at austintexas.gov and the general bond email are also available on this slide, 2016 bond at austintexas.gov. We're super responsive, so as soon as you email us, we'll do our best to get right back with you. And then if you're more interested generally in the 2016 bond, you can check out our new project website at austintexas.gov forward slash 2016 bond. You can also check out from the 2016 bond page our Capital Project Explorer, which allows you to go project by project, see exactly what we're spending, exactly what we're doing, our timelines, you can sort by what projects are ongoing, what district they're in, what type of project they are. It's a very cool tool and I encourage everybody in the community to check it out. If there are any questions, those email addresses that were available on the last si slide, and I'll go back to it one more time just in case, um, those questions are best emailed to one of those email addresses. And any comments that you have about existing conditions, like maybe you notice something that you really like and hope stays, or maybe it's something that you hate and hope changes, we hope you'll go online and, and map those comments for us on the tool that's available on our website. If you have any other questions, send those via email to those two email addresses, and we hope to see you at the next Spicewood Springs public meeting. <laughs>